Welcome to episode two of exploring the five royal palaces of Seoul. Today we're going to Doksugung, which is right next to City Hall. And today is a protest here in front of the Plaza Hotel. I guess they don't like the mayor now. What those words say is death fired fake mayor. I don't think they like the mayor now. I think they're anti-mayor and they've got the police here trying to shut them down. This is an interesting start to the video. More and more police keep turning up with their video cameras. Alright, we're gonna go do an interview with the police. Maybe she's a YouTube blogger as well. Shilla Hamnida. Yo no malheo. Yogi Mohio. I think he said just wait here, but we need to go to the palace. Did you get any answer? No, he just told me to wait. He said Gidari Heo. Uh, so I guess it's like just wait and check it out. What, what did you say? I said and then gave him a fist bump. You did the fist bump to the police officer. Yeah. That is funny. <laughs> so before we go into the palace, we're going to go to the Plaza Hotel. Ah, I missed that Sujay Mia running. Oh, they're already gone. Oh yeah, that was quick. That was like a short performance. <laughs> Over here on the left, you can see the whole Dok Sugun Palace complex. Yeah. It's really cool to see this from above. Apparently the palace area used to be three times larger than it is today and it extended out to here to where the city hall is. Dok Sugun is not as large as Gyeongbukgun, so we're not gonna have as many walks as like We're not Jungbukun. gonna get lost, are we? Definitely more variety there. <laughs> it's got lots of different styles. Yeah, modern, international. And it does look a lot smaller, which is nice. Yeah. The easiest to take a look around. This is my first time going in. Oh, really? Yeah, I've never been in this palace. That's why I think as a park, this is better than Gyeongbokgung Palace. Hmm. From my perspective, it's a lot better. And let me tell you another thing. Doksugung is a really famous cliche in Korea for lovers, place for lovers. Mm -hmm. But not inside Doksugung. Okay. But it's called Doksugung Doldamgil. Doldamgil means door means stone, dam means wall. Gil means road. But we cannot see from here because the lyrics from famous song is there. Oh, it's from a song. Yeah, it's ah. called like. Toksugung dol dam kire, ajing nama isoyo. Yeah, you something know, like you this. You have a good singing voice. Yeah. Toksugung dol dam kire, ajing nama isoyo. Na 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 na. It's called Gwangamun Yonga. That's lovely. Nowadays though, like there are a lot of people saying that you shouldn't walk there with your couples because it's said that you're gonna break up if you do that. <laughs> and the reason is at the end of the road, yeah. there is a court for divorce. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. I know the road you mean on the left hand side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what we'll do is we'll go for a walk around the palace now and then afterwards we'll go down that road so you can see what we mean. It's a beautiful road. So from this side you can see Gyeongbokgung Palace a lot better and you can actually see all the construction work they're doing. The road used to go around the whole square, now it's only going to be on the right hand side and the left side is going to be a big open park in front of the theatre. So it's much more green and open for the public which is nice. And also from here, you got a bit better view of Doksugung Palace. Oh, I'm excited to go to Doksugung. Oh, oh. Ooh. We're gonna find out something new. Oh, I can see a little pond. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I can't. Are you alright? Yeah. I wish I caught that on camera. We're finally about to go into Dok Sugung Palace. I've got great news. It's cheap to go in, it only costs a thousand won. And if you come in a group of 10 or more, only 800 won. And even better, it feels like it's gonna start raining. And I don't have a rain jacket or an umbrella, so brilliant. All right, let's go give her our Chon Won. A thousand won is about 60 pence. Annyeonghaseyo. If you saw in the last video, Gyeongbokgung Palace, after I gave my ticket in, I tried to get a fist bump, but I got rejected. 
I'm gonna try again now and let's see if I get the fist bump. Okay, now fist bump attempt. Have somebody there? This is even nicer than Jungkook. This is a lot nicer. Wow. Look at this lovely little cafe next to the pond. Woo. Wow, look at that. This is, this is the best. Yeah, this is really nice. You got some acacia trees, some cherry blossom, the purple Spanish leaf tree, and then there's a man here who's getting the tadpoles out, ready for the spring. Just looks beautiful, doesn't it? You wouldn't know that the main road is just over there, and the main city hall is there as well, and all the traffic. So for you guys watching this video, if this is your first time here, this is my first time as well. Like Everything here is brand new, so I'm excited to learn about the history of the palace, and Mickey's going to tell us about that building, the stone building. Yeah. So I don't really know the way around here, but I do know a few things. I knew that the 14th king of the Joseon dynasty, King Sunjo, was the first one to use this palace. And then it was King Gojong, the 29th or 24th king of the Joseon dynasty. Yeah. He first opened the ports to the Western world, yeah. so people could trade with Korea. And it was him that made it more modern and gave it that imperialistic look. And those are the buildings that we're going to see at the back of the palace. Okay. But already I think this is very, very beautiful. And I think it's more beautiful than Gyeongbokgung. This looks like it's where they entertained people. It was a Russian guy who built it. Oh really? Ah, oh, I think I read about this online. It's a mixture of Western. Yeah, this is also a mixture of Western and Korean. Mm. Huh. Oh yeah, it's so true. Some stones inside. Like the columns from the Colosseum. Yeah. The yeah. Roman columns. Yeah. It's got like the Korean look on the outside with the paintings and the wood and then the inside is imperialistic. This was definitely the best place for entertainment because looking out from here, this is outstanding. I like how you've got the buildings behind all the trees. Yeah. I love the layout of this. <laughs> We just tried to go along a pathway and the guard was like, you can't go there because this is where the workers go in the city and they can pass straight through the palace on the lunch break, which is beautiful. Man, I love this tree. Hmm. Maybe it's from England. Maybe it's a Latin esophagus tree. Oh, really? Probably, yeah. Oh my God. Quite well versed in my trees. <clears throat> you wanna go down or wanna keep going here? Let's keep going this way. It's a bit of a mystery as to where we're going. Tell us a bit more about Sok Cho Chon Ho, please, sir. We have a country called Tehan Jegu, between Joseon Dynasty and also Japanese colony. The Tehan Empire? Yeah, Tehan Empire. Mm -hmm. The king of Tehan Empire, the first king, who is also one of the last kings of Joseon Dynasty, wanted to make a building. So this building would represent the power and the hegemony of Tehan Empire, because it was gonna be a symbol mm -hmm. of Tehan Empire. Grand, powerful, mm -hmm. he wanted to show that. Yeah. I find it very interesting that the last king of the Joseon dynasty built something that didn't have any Korean design at all. This looks like it's straight out of Greece yeah. or Rome. Yeah, I think he was inspired by those Western styles. Mm. Maybe he thought it was awesome, he wanted That's to show that. That's a really interesting fact, mate. Well, he's done a very good job at making it look Western. This is very nice. And I like that it only costs a thousand won to come here and enjoy this. And when you come in, they have leaflets with all different languages. There's like 15 different languages with some really good information here. So when you come in, I recommend getting a leaflet. And here's an important thing to remember. All the royal palaces are closed on a Monday. They all open again on Tuesday. Monday's like the Sunday in Korea. Everything's open on a Sunday, but then most things close on a Monday. All right, let's keep going. This is the only, only existent two-story buildings built in woods in Korea. Oh, in this the one. whole of Korea? Yeah, this one. Is this the original one, do you know? Yeah, this is original. Wow. So King Sunjo from 1567 to 1608, that's when he reigned. He stayed in here in 1592 when the Japanese invaded. And this is the original one and the only two-story wooden Hanok building in all of Korea. 
Look, they didn't do danchong, right? When I got yeah, they don't do danchong, yeah. But uh, for me, I like the ones without danchong. Actually, I can't choose. Like, looking between the two, Yeah. because danchong's so common, I think I actually like this because it makes it unique that it doesn't have that painting style on. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't remember, danchong are the five colors that you see on all palaces and all Buddhist temples around Korea. This one doesn't have it. I like these doors, how they keep them hung up and then they drop them down on the night. And they'll all have underfloor heating because on the side there'll be places to put wooden coal for underfloor heating. Oh wow, this is original. So on the windows, of course they didn't have glass, they used the paper, this really thin paper. I like the design that's been carved into here as well. Next to Sokodang, you've got more of the king's living quarters. Now, let me know in the comment section which style of building you like more. Do you like the one with the Korean danchong, the five different colors? Or do you like just the plain dark wooden look? Let me know in the comments which you like more. Now let's go inside this hall because this hall looks phenomenal. You've got the same path in the middle here where only the king would walk and then the concrete pillars where people would stand like the military commander would be at the front and the person of least importance would be at the back and also behind the throne I think now I can see there's the five mountains with the sun and the moon representing the yin and the yang well done yep they've got again wow mate the paintings in here look so old yeah, this is a lot cooler than Gyeongbokgung because Gyeongbokgung looks brand new. This yeah. looks very old. Yeah, this one looks really old. So this was the main throne hall of Doksu Palace and was used for ceremonial occasions such as coronations and receiving foreign envoys. Hey man, it used to be two-story building. This one did as well? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can see on the photo on the left. 1902. It was built as two stories building, but 1904, it was on fire. Oh. So two years later, it was built again. But without the second story? Yeah. I actually think I like Doksugung Palace more than Gyeongbokgung Palace. Me too. I always did. Yeah. It feels a lot more peaceful, a lot more original. Yeah. It feels more historical as well. And it's just nicer to walk around and a lot easier. Easier on the eye. And it has nicer view as well, if you look around. Yeah, it does. Because in Gyeongbokgung, there's nothing around there. But if you look around here, it's surrounded by those contemporary buildings. Mm. This is the only <coughs> palace of the five that is surrounded by modern buildings. All the other ones are next to the mountains. No one was ever going to get through those. Look how strong this looks. I think this is the original chain as well for the gate. Whoa, there's some heavy doors. Imagine if you shot an arrow into here, it would probably go this deep. Pew! That was pretty quick and easy. We've had a look around the whole palace. Now we're gonna go down the side street to the Lover Street. Yeah. And hopefully you can sing that song to me again. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What about Korean palaces really attract you? History. I love history. And I love the architecture and the paintwork and the slanted roofs. Yeah. I just think it's so unique to Korea. Mix that in with the history. It's just a lovely place to come. Coming to the palaces is one of my favorite things to do. If you're a tourist in Seoul, you should come to the palaces and then as well go to the really old areas like Jongno or Ujiro or Chumuro. Yeah. But the palaces are probably my number one thing to do in Seoul. Yeah. And this one has become my new favorite, Doksugung Palace. Oh, yeah, it was our first time, right? Mm. Thank you for bringing me. So we're gonna go out the front now. We're gonna film the Sun Mujongs, the Korean guards wearing the traditional clothes and then go down the side road. Just as we're about to leave, the sun comes out. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just as you leave the palace main gate, you come to the right. This is Lover Street. Yeah. We have some lovers right here. All right, Mickey, take it away with the song Gwang Hwa Mundok.
Fish bash bosh, I like it. We hope you've enjoyed this Dok Sugung Palace exploration video. We're now gonna cycle to Dong Myo Flea Market to film the video for Mickey's channel. So go and check that out. There'll be a link to his channel in the description. If you've enjoyed this, click the like button. And then the next one, we're gonna go and explore the third palace of five in this little series of videos. In the comment section, let me know what you like more, the Korean style of danchong or the traditional wood. And if you've enjoyed this video, click the like button. Did I say subscribe? Subscribe if you haven't. New videos every Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. And we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.